what you gotta do, you know. That's true. Okay, so let's talk, we'll talk safety. Um, in this module, I will also be putting in a lockout safety, or lockout tag out. Um, I'll put two videos in and then a quiz that goes with it. So you'll see that populate this week. Um, so we'll do, uh, yeah, I think every module that we do will have some safety component as we go through um, just this first eight weeks. So um, safety is something that we want to talk about for every piece of equipment that we work on. Um, since we moved, we did some layout last week. We did some uh, band sawing, and some of you guys did some drill press stuff. We'll continue on with that today. Um, you will need to make sure of your surroundings. Students have a tendency to get kind of honed in and focused in on what they're doing. Um, I, I mean, the building could burn to the ground sometimes, I think, and, and students would even notice it because they're so, you know, kind of focused on what they're doing. Pay attention to what it is that you're doing. Um, obviously, like we've talked about before, uh, no screwing around, no horseplay. Don't startle or distract other people who are around you. Make sure that you're uh, machine is clean when you have a, a problem when you see a problem and, and at some point you will see some kind of problem um, you need to make sure that you say something to someone um, an instructor um, or when you're working on the job some type of supervisor so that you can make sure that the problem gets fixed because complaining about the fact that your machine is broken every day to everybody except for somebody who can fix it is kind of it, it's just not it's not very functional to do so um, if you're on any kind of medication um, that might impair you, um, I need to know, um, or all instructors would need to know, and supervisors, same thing too. Not to say that you can't do the things you need to do, but to just say, um, let's take sure, make sure that we've got some extra precautions taken care of. So, um, OSHA doesn't really have anything to do with this place, but um, OSHA is, um, is, is active in, in the workplace. So, um, okay, so where are the first aid kits located in this building? Somewhere. They are located somewhere. Yeah, so let's just talk about the job. I just haven't seen the yeah, so, so <laughs> red box. So what's that? Is it a big red box or is it a yellow box? So it's a big white box. It's a white box. It is. Um, I also noticed that they just, so, you know, you guys are in a, a little bit of a weird spot because this building's brand new. Um, they just put a AED in the other day. I'm not even sure where they put it at. So it's somewhere in a centrally located place, probably in the hallway. That's a lot where a lot of them are. Um, I'm sure we'll see an update soon as to where those things get put. So there is a big first aid kit that is located um, at this first sink station. Um, and then there's gloves located at the other sink station. So they're really right close to each other. Um, and then if you use all of the band-aids out of there, if you drink all the Neosporin, you know, whatever might happen to be, I don't know if you like to eat that kind of stuff or drink it, whatever, um, just let someone know so that we can get those things restocked. Lots of times um, we've had at times people on campus who replaced those things or replenished those things. Ours is a, a much bigger than what most of them are on campus. And if you walk around on campus, you'll see them located in certain places. Um, ours just happens to be bigger. We take care of ours ourselves. So if you see something, Make sure you say something, that way we can get it taken care of. Um, what we don't want to do is have some kind of problem. General clothing for a machining environment. Uh, we'll have our um, machining uh, work shirts soon. Um, and then everything else is really stuff that we've talked about. Um, no gloves except for specific tasks. Make sure that you have anything that is um, long and dangly out of the way. I love those lanyards, but they should not be around your neck when you're out in the shop. Um, they're just going to be way too dangerous. Honestly, even putting the lanyard in your pocket, and letting that that kind of that lanyard hang out. Say somebody won't box next to you. Yeah, I mean it's not, not uncommon to. I mean I've done it myself. I've got one. I'll I put it. On stuff and pull yeah. my phone out of my pocket because that's what I do with my phone. Yeah. I mean I will. I will. It gets hooked on one of the mill, uh, like the y-axis mill handles. Oh, handle? mm -hmm. If I'm in a hurry, I am definitely going to hit that. If I'm not in a hurry, I'm probably fine. But if I'm racing somewhere to get something, um, then it is going to snag on it five times. Um, no hoodies with drawstrings that hang down as we get into winter. That can definitely become a factor for, for sure. Um, short sleeves are better. Um, long pants are definitely appropriate. You don't have to have steel-toed uh, work boots or work boots at all. But I would say the sooner you get used to wearing them, um, 
you know, something like that, the better you are. Uh, uh, boots, I would, yeah, I would rather be in work boots than probably anything else because I'm just, that's just what I'm used to doing. I think once we can get you broke in, the most comfortable mm -hmm. suit you'll wear. Yeah, and, and I would also say spend the money on the ones that, that are, that are better. Uh, buy what you can, is what I would say. Yeah. Um, so there's a couple different kinds. They've got the shoes. Uh, I'm always tempted to buy the shoes, but I never do. Um, you've got lace-up or slip-ons, um, and then you have the kind that cover the metatarsal. Uh, these, man, I gotta tell you, these are gonna get heavy at the end of the day. So you, you really- uh, Five, six pounds left on Yeah, you don't wanna walk around like that all day. That's just gonna be, it's just gonna get pretty old, okay? Um, long hair should be pulled back, safety glasses all the time. Um, any kind of PPE for us, which is pretty much just safety glasses. Um, we do have um, earplugs, so if you want to wear earplugs, they're right by the um, uh, wash station, uh, sink station, and right next to the um, first aid kit. So uh, pull them out. What a lot of people do is they'll grab two or three pairs, throw them in their toolbox, that way they're there with them all the time. Get that lab bill? Not usually. Um, you're probably going to get your most, uh, your high decibel stuff from air blasts. Uh, so somebody might be blowing something off and then they start to get real close to it. It just starts to get real loud, it starts to whistle, yeah. Um, some of the, sometimes the machining does get loud, especially on the CNC's. You got three or four of them going, you got somebody who doesn't have their speeds and feeds quite right, and it just starts to get loud. That's expected, okay? So like that's not a, that's not a problem. Um, so hard hats are not an issue here in this building. Um, hard hats are going to be required anytime you got some overhead work going on. So like when we were building this building, always we wore hard hats when we came into them. So uh, I keep one with me in my car almost all the time because I go to places like Nucor and other places along the way. Um, if you go to places like, um, oh, there's a, a Gates down in Versailles. Um, Hard hats, um, steel toes. Yeah, I mean, you don't walk in, and they'll check to see if you have steel toes. No, they closed gates. Uh, they just closed gates. Uh, yeah. Um, What's the big building that is built in Versailles? Versailles? I don't know. It's long. Yeah, not sure. So yeah, they. So not even composite toes are not even okay there, or weren't even okay there. Had to be steel toes. So they magnet check you. I mean, when you walked in, so you couldn't even be like, "Yep, I got them." Because there has been times that I've gotten there and I've had like these on, which are not steel toe. And they're like, you good? I'm like, yep, I'm good. And then they pull up the magnet and I'm like, I'm actually not good. <laughs> so, you got to make sure you got the right stuff. Um, face shields are totally fine. A lot of times we see those when we're doing some kind of grinding. Um, if you prefer to have something like that, you're welcome to do something like that. Uh, make sure that they are appropriate. Okay, that's the only thing I ask. Um, I don't want you to really get into the habit of wearing earmuffs uh, just because they drown out so much sound. And if we have an emergency, it's the same thing with earbuds. If we have an emergency, I just need you guys to be able to react quickly. Um, if we have everybody in here at, um, at the right time, you will get... So if we have three classes hopping through here, um, a, since, or, uh, college classes are 12 apiece, so that's, 12, or that's 24. Our high school class goes to 16. So you can get, you can get 35, 36, you can get all my plus instructors, you can get 40 people in here. And if there's an emergency, we need to be able to get out fast. Where is like storm shelter? In so I put a video in, um, on the YouTube channel on how to activate the storm shelter door uh, for, for the building. So the third classroom down is, a, is our, our, our storm shelter for the building. And as you walk in, you'll see little switches or little things on the door. And, and so they have security switches. When you close the door, you click the little thing and the door, it's got some extra pins that pop out. So the wind won't blow it out? Right, so um, it, it's totally locked down there. So, and, and the windows in that class are bulletproof. So if there is any kind of thing that happens, um, that's the place to go to, okay? I'm sealing in there. It's a uh, it's solid concrete. Really, mm -hmm. so it's complete storm shelter. Yeah. It is the storm shelter. Yeah, it's a physical storm shelter for this building. I, mean, I, mean, I feel safe. Classroom here. like that. Yeah. It looks like this. So I was like, it looks yeah. very similar to this, but if you'll notice, all the walls under block. Uh -huh. Now the ceiling looks the same, but it's concrete overhead. Uh, 
So yeah, it's very secure. You'll notice it has a lot less windows in it. So. Who engineered this building? You know. What's that? Who engineered this building like that? You know. Um, place in Kansas or Springfield. So. Um, they, it's okay. Um, and then <laughs> you know, there's plenty, 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 plenty of problems. Plenty of problems. Um, you've got um, ventilation hoods that you can have. Um, you can have respirators like this. Anytime you're dealing with something with fumes, that's a really good idea. Uh, a lot of our CNC machines uh, anymore in industry will have some kind of smoke eater on them so they get that out of there. Um, you have ones like this, uh, all kinds of different stuff. Gloves are great. Um, gloves are, so like when you guys do NC3, gloves are appropriate for measurement. Um, gloves are appropriate for handing, handling chemicals. Um, work gloves are appropriate for handling like bandsaw blades and stuff like that. What you don't want to do is find yourself using gloves on like the drill press or the bandsaw when you're like vertical bandsaw. It's too easy for those things to get snagged and pull you in. I mean, honestly, it's better to lose a finger than a hand, which both of those suck. But, um, and that's why we're using push, push blocks and stuff. We don't want it, we don't want those things to happen. Um, housekeeping, you're always going to, when you get done, you need to clean up your area completely. Um, our hoppers for um, getting rid of metal chips and stuff are not here yet. They're a powder coat. They're coming back. Um, but, you know, it, just probably the smart thing to do every day when you get done. Um, sweep up everything. If you're on a lathe and you got a lot of chips, just pull the tray out, take it over to the hopper, dump it out. And it's really important to do this before they get too heavy. So, like, we're getting some, uh, basically, trash cans on rollers um, that go underneath our CNC's. If you let those trash cans get full to the top, they are insanely heavy. So the idea is dump them after every class. You've got this much chips in there. You can just dump that over because there might be a super hot person that you're interested in. And if you can't lift that, you're going to look, there's no chance you're going out with this person. Okay. So if you can go, yeah, this thing's full and dump it. You look like awesome. If you're like, oh, I can't lift the trash can and he or she comes over and just dumps it for you, then you don't look that good. So just make sure that you're doing those kinds of things. Um, put all your stuff away. You should have enough time every day to just go ahead and put all your tools away, clean them all up. If you have a problem with the tool, um, here's what happens lots of times is somebody will be, oh man, I, I broke my micrometer, calipers, something, that's okay. I'll say something tomorrow in class. Tomorrow in class is not your class time, so it's somebody else's. And then you come in and you're like, hey man, I broke this. I need you to stop what you're doing and help me for 20 minutes and fix this thing. And I'll say no, because this other class has this class time. You had yesterday. Yeah, and yesterday would have been your time to do that. So we could do that after I get done with this group and you'll be like, do I, but I need these calipers right now. And you'll still need them in an hour when I'm done with this class. So, you know, that's, 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 because otherwise you end up monopolizing time and, I, and we can't have that. Um, Soon you'll have in your toolboxes a little basically tackle box um, tray and it'll hold all your cutting tools in it. The idea is that we're not storing cutting tools so that they're touching each other. Um, once at that point, you'll be keeping all of your cutting tools so you'll keep them in your boxes at a time. You won't need to get me or, and get you tools out. So like the guys this morning are like, hey, I need a half inch end mill, I need this, I need that, I need this. Sometimes you'll need specialty tools from me, but for the most part, um, the things that you'll need will be in your boxes. Material storage, um, we've got a bunch of material in Friday, so we'll probably get some sawing done today if you guys are in some spots. Brass hmm? coming? Brass came, came in. So, uh, but you guys are far from that project. So, um, so uh, we want to get material sawed up, get it deburred, and get it put away. And um, chemicals, we talked about some of those things already. We do have. Um, uh, Oil dry, that's about the only thing that we have. Um, oil dry can really do a lot. So people have a tendency to go like heaping pile over it. And I'm like, if you man, if you go kind of kind of light on it, and it's not even that I'm trying to be stingy on it, it's just it gets scattered everywhere. And so our welding instructors on job for they clean our shop every day. Yeah. In place we literally had to dump the trash cans out every day onto the floor. Sweep it all up. And then put it back in. That sounds terrible. Stupidest thing I've ever done. Yeah, that sounds terrible. All right, um, guards and barriers. So any type of guards that are on the machines. If you notice 
Um, one of the guards or one of the sensors or switches on the CNC's not working, don't be like, cool, I can open the door and run the machine now. Say something. It's a huge problem for us. Um, if we have a machine that a switch or a sensor isn't working to where you can open up the door and run the machine at full speed, uh, that's a problem. Some of our machines, um, you can open the doors. Some of the machines you can open the doors and the spindle will reduce. Some of the machines you'll op you open the doors and the machine stops. Depends on what generation of machine it is. Um, insert fingers here. No. Okay, don't do that. Stay away from things like that. We want to make sure that we don't have any kind of open stuff like that. Obviously, we've talked about lifting, compressed air. I tell this story all the time. Um, yeah, compressed air is, is kind of a funny thing, um, and you know people like to abuse it and overuse it. I worked at a shop, and this guy told me about a time when he worked at Gardner Denver, in, when Gardner Denver was in Compton, California, and um, they were playing with these air air nozzles, and comes up behind a guy, kind of on his backside, and blasts a bunch of air, um, and causes like internal damage. And guys, the guy has had surgery. So, I mean, like, how do you explain that? You know, what happened? Oh, we were screwing around the shops, and I blew air up my butt, and now I've got intestinal problems or something. I'm like, that, and obviously that escalated, and it didn't seem like that big of a deal at the time, but it really could be potentially a problem. So, just, it, when we, if we keep this a professional environment, then we never have to worry about those kinds of things. Lockout, tagout, you're going to see some more specific video stuff on that. Um, like I said, populate in there. Lockout, tagout's changed a little bit. Hazardous material and MSDS um, are available. We've already talked about those types of things. This stuff is all in your book as well. We'll skip through. We should be just about done with that. So SDS, some of these things, fire safety, um, several fire extinguishers throughout the shop. Um, that might even be a quiz question. Where is the um, where are the fire extinguishers located, and where are where is the first aid kit located? I may just add some questions. I'm CPR certified. I got this. Okay. I'm IV certified. You have to be for my job. So. What's your job? I work at a nursing home. Okay. I drove. I got IV certified in the Army. So I'll give you insulin or whatever you need. That's dope. I didn't know that. I can do it to myself, too. That was the shittiest thing ever. You can go get a job. You know how hard it is to stick a needle up inside your arm and draw blood? I just by yourself. I, I could perform surgery. I've done it. I can do it on myself. Wouldn't bother me a bit. It, it, bo it bothered me, but I have to. I love talking to other people. Scientists who had to take his own appendix out in Antarctica or something. I could that would be hard. Other people, but I hate to myself. He took his own appendix out. Yeah, that'd be tough. My appendix was found up here. I had mine ruptured. Huh. It's down here. Really? When we get to the hospital now, it's yeah. got ruptured and they found it up here. Wow. Um, my appendix is in the trash somewhere. Like 30 years ago. So, cut it out. My consoles are in a jar somewhere. Are they? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I kept mine. All right, so we're going to talk about some measurement here and some math and some math operations. Okay, so, uh, yeah, so today kind of starts to get a little bit more difficult in what we do. But you're going to see, like, um, the way that the class works sometimes is um, we'll go out to the shop and we'll do something that we haven't quite learned yet, and then we'll come back and we'll catch some stuff up, and then we'll do some stuff that we haven't done on the shop yet, and then they'll they'll kind of they'll, sometimes they'll get in front of each other and behind each other, but they stay pretty close to each other as they as they go through. So we'll look at the English system and we'll look at the metric system. If you're in machining 105 metrology, then you're going to start to be doing these things anyways if you haven't already for NC3. So um, we're going to look at the met, honestly the metric system is way better, smarter. Um, and so we'll start looking at uh, fractions, and we've already looked at, at some of those things. And then we'll look at converting, and then we'll look at um, converting fractions to decimals. So up until now, we've talked fractions, um, but soon we'll, we'll go to decimals, and we'll only speak in decimal form from here on out. What's that? Yeah, so thousands, yes. Five thousandths of an inch. Um, 400,000. Yeah, 75 thousandths of an inch, not to be confused with 750 thousandths of an inch. Yeah, so um, make sure that we, we know what we're talking about. Different than measuring rain gauge style measurements. Okay. So you can add the TH at the end for. Exactly. So here, 
Um, an eighth of an inch is 125 thousandths. Okay, so everything that we do will talk with a three place decimal. So even a half of an inch, see how it has two trailing zeros? Even though it's really 0 0.5, it could be written 0 0.5, we're always going to call it 500 thousandths. Um, a quarter inch is 250 thousandths, three quarters of an inch is 750 thousandths. It's not, it's not 75 thousandths. Okay. 750. 75 thousandths would be 0 0.075. So like the 51 because it's thousandths? So on that one, you're going to go out three decimal places and then you're going to add the and. So uh, 51 64 yeah. 796 thousandths and Almost nine tenths. Almost nine tenths. Oh. Almost nine ten thousandths of an inch. Oh, okay. have to read that. That's a yeah. Number. So the, yeah, you start to get out to millions. Then there's um, more rounding up in that stuff, is there? There's not much rounding, and so generally, what I'm going to ask you to do as 101s is that hold things out to three place decimals. That's the one thousandth of an inch. I have a key card on it. Yeah. So I won't have everything else is. So, so like I would say, let's look at five eighths of an inch, six twenty five, but then let's look at nineteen thirty seconds. I would just call that. Um, I would. So it's 593 thousandths and seven tenths, but it could be rounded up to 594. But that's really about as much as I would want to do on that one. Nine sixteenths, um, so you could go 562 and a half. or 563 would be appropriate for that. But that's probably as far as we can round up. You can round up. But really five tenths to, to the to the next yeah to the yeah to the next ten thousandths of an inch. All this in metrology and pre-algebra at the same time. Exactly. So so we actually time all of those things together so that we're doing those things at the same time. Because what we don't want to do is go. We're going to talk about conversions. Then we're going to someplace else is going to talk about this, and then three months later we're going to talk about this. And sort of, let's make sure that we pound this in so that everybody knows what it is. It's making it a lot easier because I was like, you know, yeah, I already learned this. You know? Why have the United States <laughs> on the metric system? Because um, we think we're right about everything. So, yeah. All right, so how do you say 13 sixteenths? Cole? In decimal form. How do you say it? 13 sixteenths. Yeah, make it bigger. 13 sixteenths. If I touch it, it'll try to do something. Oh. Uh, is that 8.8125? It is, but how do you say it? <laughs> Anybody else? 812,000 and 5 tenths. Yes. Or you could round up to 813,000. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, Cole, 7 eighths. How do you say that one in a. Why are you picking on me today? Because you didn't answer the first one. So, <laughs> so how do you say 7 eighths in decimal form? That would be. You can move really close to it if you want to. Yeah, feel free. Get up right there to, to 875,000. 875,000. Perfect. Okay. Um, let's just go. We'll go this way. Hunter, you're next. Um, how do I say? Taking out to three place decimals, 4764. Uh, 4764. Directly in the middle. You, you can, you've got legs. Directly in the middle. You said 4764? Oh, that's better. Help. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, as, that's as big as I can go. I said 4764s. How do I say that in a three place decimal? That'd be 7. Don't worry about it if you don't get it right. It's just shaming. Yeah. Waterboarding. 4764. 734,000? 734,000 would be fine, yeah. So you could round it up, 734, 4. 734 and 4 tenths would be appropriate. So, but 734 would be all that I'm looking at for this class. Okay, so just three place decimals is all I care about. 
Just three place out. Okay. What about that? I don't know. Just three place out. Did you tell the finals on the Wi Fi in here? Oh, that was tragic. Okay. All right. Tell me your name again. Steven. Steven. Um, 730 seconds. What is it in a three place decimal? It's 730 seconds. Yes. Oh, so there's probably a volume button on it. Yeah. Whoa, go down. Oh my god. tenths. Seven tenths. Seven tenths. Yeah. So the next one would be we start to go into fifty millionths and, and stuff like that. So we're not concerned about that right now. So so you could say two hundred and eight <laughs> seven thirty seconds, two hundred and eighteen and seven tenths. You could even go two nineteen on that one. Yep. You can go as far as two nineteen. Um okay. Uh, Eric, nine sixty fourths. Nine sixty fourths. How do I say it? Okay, fine. You got One hundred forty thousandths of an inch and ten six tenths. Yeah, so one hundred forty and six tenths. One hundred forty and six tenths. Uh, one hundred forty one. You could round it up to one hundred forty one thousand. Uh, tell me your name again. Brian. Uh, Brian, do five sixty fourths. Um, seventy eight thousandths. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can say seventy eight thousandths. You can say seventy eight thousandths one tenth. So, but yeah, seventy eight thousandths is where we're at on that one. Cool. Good job. That will be one that we just continue to do over and over and over again. So that's that. That was yeah, a pound in my brain. So exactly. Yeah. 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 I'm going to struggle with it if I forget it. Yeah, so but you won't. So in the beginning, you will. Um, but pretty soon, you'll just automatically see things like that. You really will. In the same way, like I told you the first day, you'll start to look at not things, but how things are made or the parts of things. I started doing that. Yeah, like I, I could look at a movie camera, and I'm really thinking about how the movie camera is made rather than the movie camera I'll itself. You know? So we used to make, um, a long time ago when I first started, um, we had a class, and, and I'm not sure why this happened, but um, we made a bunch of, like, uh, a couple guys had Sportsters, and so we made a bunch of front wheels for Harleys. Really? So you buy wheel blanks, and then they would just, they would machine them out. Yeah. yeah. You customize them to whatever you want, put your name in it, you know, and stuff like that. It was, it was really cool. I want to make some cool stuff. In yeah. Yeah. It's, it's fun. Now, a lot of the stuff that we make is just kind of standardized widgets, you know, My but... Mom wants one of them when the skills USA start? Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's 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 till it, it's not till like uh, closer to the end of the year. Because yeah, I saw on Facebook or they're not on Facebook, but on the website they're talking about how well they did this last year. Mm -hmm, yeah. So we took uh, fourth place in the nation, and um, this year I'm hoping to get in the top three. So um, that's that's pretty far away. We'll do. We're going to do quite a bit of skills things this year. So. Oh, a lot of it's, it's a lot of fun. It's a really part of it for sure. Um, okay, some machining math concepts. We talk about ratios and proportions. Where are we going to talk about ratios? Uh, the comparison between two numbers. Yes, uh, but specifically, <laughs> where would we look at ratios in, in the shop? Where would that be a common place where we look at ratios? Okay, mixing of chemicals, right? Yeah, mixing of chemicals is probably our, our big ratio one. Coolant, that would be the one, that would be the chemical that I'm really talking about. So when we look through the refractometer, um, we're going, we're like, okay, so um, I got too much coolant, not enough coolant. I need to increase the ratio, bring the down ratio down. A gallon of water with one drop of coolant. That's how I do my car. It runs perfectly fine. <laughs> Pretty much is. <laughs> yeah. We usually just five gallon bucket of water. Two two water and then that's pretty thick. That's pretty thick. Really? Five and five. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. pretty solid ratio. Like we're 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 gonna do like we're gonna do like one gallon to seven gallons. Well, one it gallon depends on how much you need to fill it, though. Yeah, one gallon of coolant to about seven gallons of water. Really? Mm -hmm. I mean, that would be that. That's pretty it standard. Depends on the machines. It doesn't depend on the machines. It depends on the coolant manufacturer, but typically somewhere right between. Five and ten to one is about right. You know? So that's why that's why our gauge 
um, we, we always say, some of them actually say, cooling should measure between five and 10. The ratio should be about five to 10. All right, so we'll look at some basic geometry. Geometry probably plays uh, as big a factor into things as anything. Uh, parallel lines, parallel lines are lines that will never intersect. They, the distance between them stay totally constant. So it's like this, it's not like this. Okay, so they are always parallel to each other. Okay, so like these two, this line and this line are parallel, they'll never ever run into each other. Uh, perpendicular lines, like this, yep, 90 degrees. Um, circles, we have diameter, radius, and circumference. So the diameter is how big or round it is this way, measuring across it. The radius is half that. Circumference would be the, around the periphery of it. So um, if you were to take a tape measure and wrap it around the outside of the part. Okay? So that's going to be important when we're starting to talk about surface footage. So we want to calculate those things. All right. Um, so here we just have some examples of what we were just talking about. 90 degrees. circumference all the way around it. Okay? Two pi r. Yes. Or pi r. Yeah. And then we have arcs. Arcs are um, two specific points on a diameter or around the circumference of something. Um, and so that's going to, if when you get into... Is that when we start measuring with like the automatic measure thing? So when measuring an arc, yeah, I mean, you're going to see those things measured more CMM or optical comparator. Optical comparator probably a better. Well, some of your YouTube stuff that we were talking about, it just marked two points on the around it and it measured out. Absolutely. Yeah, totally. So we have arcs, we have tangents, those are intersection points, and then angles. Um, so here we have angles of an arc. Um, Cartesian coordinates. Cartesian coordinates is our primary measuring system. I don't know if you guys remember that from high school, but um, so if you look at it, they actually call it the right hand rule, but it always works better for me with my left hand. These are all of your positives. If you are using your right hand, you've got to go like this. Okay, so I'm going to show you in just a minute. I feel like you just flipped me off. <laughs> um, so if you're right handed, your right hand rule is like this. So rotate your arm over. Yep, yep, yep. So just the middle finger up. Yep, there you go. This is a familiar motion. <laughs> I'm sure. I was doing this yesterday, actually. Um, so this, so if you look, Z is positive, Y is positive, X is positive. Okay? So if you do it with your left hand, it's just kind of automatic. Z is positive, Y is positive, X positive. Okay? So that fits for everything. And so I, I really, I mean, I want you to... When you start to, if I say, hey, we want to measure this part, uh, it's on the CMM, this is X0, Y0, Z0, you should be able to think, I'm going to put this here in this corner, I'm going to measure out this way, measure out that way, do that across there. So, yeah, teach me all that. yeah, I mean, that's what we're here for. So, X is your measurement typically across this way, okay? Y is typically your measurement this way, Z is typically your measurement this way. But that's not always true, okay? I never had to do Z values. Yeah. So, and, and that's what we've got. We've got really kind of two dimension stuff, X and Y. I had to do a bunch of that with the robotics class. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, when, when doing Cartesian coordinates and the robotics stuff, absolutely. It's, it's knowing what it is in the world, what it is to the tool. And, and so, when the, when the tool gets flipped around, um, X, Y, and Z begin to follow those things. So, Z, Z positive. So, like how I've got that robot program now. Z positive is down. So, um, you know, and, and then if I, I switch it around for the world or for the tool, whatever it might happen to be, so it's all fluid. But it, but it, it makes it nearly impossible to program if you can't do those things. Because you... I always work in the world because it would just confuse my head. Yeah. The CNC machine spins on the five axis, that's why. So the five negative axis, negative, yeah. You, negative and positive that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and really on any of them, you can do positives and negatives. So it's just it's just in where where you are in relationship with those things. So so x y and z could be x y z That's could be here, it could be here, it could be here, it could be here. It's for like measuring a square piece of metal. And yeah. Way you can tell like, what, what, right what axis you're on when you're measuring or whatever. 
It's just a way to, for you to identify what's the positives. Okay, so, so if I say, when we get to the CNC mills, or we even we're on a manual mill, and I say X0, Y0 is in this corner right here, you're gonna to touch off here, and you're gonna to touch off here. That means everything from here will be positive in X, everything from here would be negative in Y. If the Z is on the top of the part, everything, from, everything up is positive, everything into the part is Z negative. If it's on the bottom of the part, which is way better, then everything Z is positive. Um, so it's just, it's just a matter of where it is. So if I go X0, Y0 is here, then that means that all of my Y's are negative, all of my X's are negative, and then everything is positive over here and then over here. I don't understand that. I just mean you said. But you're, but you're, you're doing it with your hand. And I mean, so you could go, uh, maybe I'll just buy a tattoo gun on Amazon and we'll just do a Z and a Y and an X. A girlfriend's album. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, that'd be fine. Wireless all my imagination. Yeah, or marker, or, you know, or whatever. There's a lot of different ways you can do it. Okay, so that, that one is going to be, you know, some things I, I would say, hey, file this away and know how to access the information. Okay, so like certain, it's just, these are things you're going to need to know all the time, right? And so they're just going to be coming into your mind. Basic trigonometry, um, that's, that's going to be something that we need to know all the time. Yeah, I'm going to show you how to do it really simply. Because um, most likely you've probably been doing it, you don't even realize it. A squared plus B squared plus C squared. Yep. Um, so you've got those types of things. So now for me, that doesn't necessarily make a ton of sense, yeah, like in my mind. I that, but yeah, I don't really even understand that. The only reason it makes sense because I know that is the only part that makes sense is that the formula works. Right. And so I think with math, lots of times you know the formula, you plug the numbers in, and you're just like, I think that's the right answer. With the calculators that we have, um, I got one in my pocket. Um, this will really help you be able to figure out um, how to do decent common trig formulas in really like five steps. And um, so your hypotenuse is for us always going to, actually for everything, always going to be your longest line. Okay. We're going to always work with the assumption that C is 90 degrees. Okay. And then, so you have your opposite and then you have your adjacent. So adjacent means it's, it's around the corner. Okay, so like if you lived on, um, if you lived on a corner, your adjacent neighbor would be there, yeah. Um, so the neighbor on the opposite side of the street would be on the opposite. Okay, so those, those, those are probably the places that I start to get mixed up at. Um, so we'll look at sine, cosine, tangent. But I'm telling you, um, I, I used to really fight against things like this but they just made life so easy that, well, this specific calculator, this specific calculator is a machining calculator and it figures, it figures triangles for you. So it's really, really simple. the textures instrument thing that's heavy as hell? Yeah, you've got no excuse to not know these things. And when you go and do like your um, NIMS testing or something like that, you can take one of these with you, you can't take the phone with you. So, like, I also have the same calculator uh, as an app on my phone. What's the app for? And um, so it's called Machine Calc Pro 2. And so same thing. They're literally identical. Yep. So I had always told students, hey, go ahead and download this app. It's like 25 bucks. And this is like $100 for the calculator. And um, Machine Calc Pro 2. And so it's like 25 bucks. And, and, and that's kind of expensive for an app. But... It is everything that this is. And, but our problem was, is when we went down to do our um, NIMS testing, you cannot use a phone, and you, but, you, but you can use a calculator. So our students went down there with their calculator phones, and they were like, no, I can't use them. So we had to run back and go grab some calculators. And so then at that point, we were like, we gotta buy some calculators, we've got them. So, um, okay, uh, that's the end of that. Um, let's see. We may stop for a second and do a couple of triangles before we move on. Let's see what we got, just one more of these. Which one did we just do? We must have just did. I don't know, it's really it's on the eyes. It's 13 now. What's that? Oh, it is. 
CNC Machinist Calculator Pro. Yeah, it's really good. Okay, so we've got... Seems they got a bunch of other stuff in there too, other than just the calculator. Yeah, Wait, they make them for... Drilling calculator, angle solver, turning calculator. Oh. Tap and drill information. Yeah, that's that's all in. That's all part of the calculator. Yeah, even that is in here. So, um, all right. So let me show you just real quickly how to use the calculator. Um, did you guys bring your calculators? You got, go grab it out of my tool. Go grab your calculators out of your toolbox. I'm going to put a couple examples on the board. Racing. Uh, if we were racing, then I just lost, but I don't race, so <laughs> you look at me, dude. You look, do you look like everyone? <laughs> no, I mean, I don't know. I used to. So I will do the first one with you, and then um, we'll go from there. Everybody's calculator turn on? No? Just making sure sometimes we have some battery issues. Probably the first thing to solve a triangle on this thing. Okay. So, I've got this one here. I know what the length is, right? And then the angle. And then the angle. So I go to my calculator, hit on, uh, on and clear a couple times. I think two times is what clears everything. And I hit 30 degree, so put 30, <coughs> angle. And then the adjacent to it, or so what's next door to it, is 5.25. So then type in 5.25 adjacent. Now if I want to know the opposite, I hit the opposite button, OPP. And then tell 3.031. You were cheating. I got three. It's like cheating. 31,000. It's feels like cheating. It is like cheating. It is cheating. Yep. And I so, this. I, I love this. It's so great. So, I mean, I used to like kick against it. I would be like, nope, we're not going to do that. We're going to do it the hard way. And then finally, I was like, why are we doing this, man? I was just scared. All well, because not everybody has one of these calculators, but everybody has the ability. A scientific calculator you can buy for like $10, or it's already on your phone. And then what was happening to me is with students were going to trig calculators app. Just to, you know, they just go to a website and do a trade calculator, and I was like, oh my gosh, if we're gonna, if we're gonna always be doing workarounds like this, I'm like, let's just, let's just do this thing. I didn't have, well, I they have a math scanner, and I use a math scanner. Oh, no, math. math. Yeah. yeah. I think the other reason I would allow this is because industry allows it. That's just it. So I mean, it's specific. If you're in work field, you'll have a calculator with. You. God dang. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. The that. last thing I thought I was gonna go into was something to deal with math. Oh. Yeah, lots of math, man. <laughs> we'll see how good I do. You know, I might disappear halfway through the semester because I failed it. Uh, hey, Brent, is that what it is? It Brent? Is it? What's your name? Brian. Brian. It's all thanks to you. Why? 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 Why?
B R Y A N. Um, are you, Eric with the C? R I C K. Special. I have an E R I K at the second eight weeks. Um, Stephen. Yes. And T in the Bible. P H E N. There you go. Uh, Hunter. Nope, spelled it wrong. Did I? Yeah. This is a K. We have a K. Oh, I think I knew that. You did, you've known me for six I years. I was going to say, I should have known You haven't. <laughs> yeah, I should know that. I actually even was looking at stuff today, and I should know that. All right. So um, I want you to find um, this one. Okay. Um, I want you to find this guy. I want you to find this guy. Um, this guy, and then this guy. Oh man, I should have probably done a couple angles. Too. That's okay. You got to figure out. And after that, yeah. find angles, and then after that, find yeah. yeah, yeah. Got mine. Got yours. Okay, just just hang tight. We'll get them all, and we'll go through them. That's a three point oh, right? Uh, hundred three point oh. Yes. Yeah, I'm telling you, man. These calculators are just freaking awesome. Well, the first semester or the first. Chapter or whatever we're in, and in, in pre-algebra, we're not allowed to use calculators. Yeah, I, yeah, you know she's not going to enforce that. I went home and I used my calculator all the way through every single homework problem. And what are you going to do if she watches this video? Is it Bobby? I used my calculator. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, I don't care. <laughs> I'm going to use it. I'm not okay. I'm, You're going to send me up with pages of like some, some of those things. Honestly, like it. Just a calculator, what made it so easy. And I, well, I think I, the idea is that you're not, not no, that. No, but without it, I would spend like forever without it. Right. Or there was sometimes that it was like. So what are you going to do if she says, hey, Brian, come on up to the board and do this? I mean, I know like how to do like I mean, she, multiplication. Okay. And, and, all there, that. and there, there was like, do it. There was like <laughs> 87 divided by 4 or something. And I'm like, I can't do that. What? Yes, you can. That's no, not that hard. No, I cannot. I'm not giving you seven divided by four. Well, um, so it must be twenty, almost twenty-two. It could be twenty-one and some change. Yeah. Exactly. So, I could figure that. I just did that in my head. I could figure okay, out the change after pretty we fast. We have a couple more years, or how many years he has? He's old, dude. I he am, knows all this I crap by heart. Yeah. But that's I'm just good. dividing. That's just like, that's like money. You know what I mean? I, I like money. Come on. But I mean, so if you think about that, it's like eighty-seven dollars divided by four people. Yeah, that all went out the window whenever we started saying thousandth, thousands, <laughs> or whatever okay. the heck we're doing. <laughs> I was like, okay, so money is not. That's, that's how I did decimals for the longest time. So I was like, I, it was I, like money. So, so I oftentimes use the examples of my of money with micrometers. So I think that it's a. It's a valid. Micrometers are easy if you just like if so like if you just get told how to read them, they're super easy. Yeah, yeah. We'll spend a lot of time on. Okay, Brian, what do you have? I got four point six twelve. Or do you want me to say it? Uh, yeah, say it like it should be. <laughs> four and six hundred twelve thousandths. Four and six hundred twelve thousandths. Okay. I did and right. Yeah. And um, yeah, so you get it. You get two opportunities for ands, at the decimal point, and after the one thousand. Okay. So if there was change on the end of that, you could be four inches. Uh, so I typically would say four inches, comma, six hundred twelve thousandths and three tenths. Or but you could say uh, four inches and six hundred twelve thousandths and three tenths or whatever. Yeah. So I didn't. I'm not going to double check you, but since I know this is 50 degrees, um, I know this angle. I know that, or I know this line. This line should be longer than this line because it's 50 degrees. So I think that that's probably right. Um, Eric, what do you got for your hypotenuse? Is 5.25? thousandths. So two inches. Yep. And fifteen thousandths. Zero one five. So two inches, zero, one, five, so two inches, 15 thousandths. Um, well, I thought about doing this. I think that's wrong. You did the, the I think you did, I, feel backwards. I think you did this one rather than this.
this one. I did that one. I think I did it backwards. Mine's even more confused because I don't know which one it is. Yeah. Okay. So I want you to. 21 degree angle in there first, right? I think that, yeah, so you're going to do um, 21 degrees. Then 5.25 adjacent. That's, no, 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 no. Oh, that's not the hot. That's probably that's hot news. That's probably that's tough. Okay, so do 21 degrees. Okay. And then do hypotenuse. Angle. Nope, you, got, you already got, um, you already did 21 angle. And then you do 5.25 hypotenuse. And then you can push the adjacent or the opposite button. Four point, or four and... 4.901,000. For the opposite. Um, and so, okay, or the adjacent, so give me the other one. And then the other one should be something like the other button. Uh, it's 1.881,000. 8 what? 881. 881. 881,000. That seems right. Okay. So, you get, and why I say that is because this is a shallow yeah, angle. I got confused of which. What another yeah. button? So push. shallow yeah. angle, you you should be just just short of your hypotenuse. Okay. Um, Steven, you said you got uh, one point three hundred nine thousandths. One inch. And the other one is like one thousand something. Twenty. Oh, angle. No. No, the hypotenuse is. I don't know if I did it correctly, but it showed up twenty one. And something. Um, it's a little too big, I think. 20 degrees and something? Is that what you're saying? Uh, ish. I'm going to say 20 ish. Okay. So here's what I would do is I would figure out this angle. I'm lost on how you're, why you're working with uh, the hypotenuse. It's 21 and 701 thousandths. The hypotenuse says what? 21. Seven hundred and one thousandths. Okay, that doesn't that doesn't work right. So I can no. write the met, like the idea. I'm that. messing up somewhere then. Okay, so if this is fourteen, this is ninety, right? Mm -hmm. So what's this? It's got to equal out to what? Probably around. Yeah, hundred. Seventy six. One eighty. Uh, a triangle is always going to be a total of 180. So you take 90 plus 14 and then subtract that from 180. Yeah, we're going to get 180 minus 90. Put that back here. Yeah. So I remember that. Exactly. That's going to be 100. <laughs> so you got 76 degrees. Um, so hypotenuse is probably pretty long at that kind of an angle, right? So this is 5.25. We know that already. And so now do 76 as your angle and then 5.25 as your adjacent and see what you get for an opposite. And 1 point, oh, for 1 point 57 thousandths. Now hit the hypotenuse button. 21, 701 thousandths. Now you're right. So this is not right. And so what we have is short, long leg. Exactly. But like, but if you like flipped it down, you'd be like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Um, Hunter, you have three inches and twelve degrees, and so you need to figure out this guy. Zero point six hundred and thirty-eight thousandths. Oh, maybe. What's the so hit the hypotenuse button? Three point sixty-seven thousand. Okay, I take that shallow degree. The hypotenuse is still longer than this leg, and so just really not very tall on that side. Okay, one of the things you gotta do, you wanna make sure it makes sense. Six hundred thirty-eight thousand. Is that what you said? Six hundred thirty-eight thousand. Yeah, for the opposite. Six thirty-eight. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, I did it too. That's what. Okay. And that's what I got. Yeah. Um, Cole. 322 thousandths. 322 thousandths. Okay, that, I bet that's.
that's probably right. So you've got here, you've got 90 degrees, so 90, so this is then 75 degrees. 75 degrees. So let's do a double check. 75 degrees and then 3.22 um, for the adjacent. Um, and what do we get? Uh, no, I just want to double check this 1.2 leg. Do you get 1.2? 1.202. 1.202. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Close. And then what do you get for the hypotenuse? 1.244,000. Okay. So longer than this leg. So all those, all those things we know or are known hold true. So that's what I would always say when I'm working on a triangle. If I get some janky number, I'm like, hold on, that doesn't look right. Don't go further. Now, if it looks right, they're like, okay, that makes sense. So you start to realize 30 degrees, you've got, um, so on one to 30 degrees, um, this leg is usually just over half of what this leg is. Yeah. You know, so like those things are gonna start to make sense. At 45 degrees, this leg is half of what this leg is. Or I'm sorry, this leg is the same as what this leg is at 45 degrees. Those things will start to come into play. We just start to realize those things. Some of them are just, we're gonna do it so much that you're gonna be like, oh yeah, that totally makes sense. So I would encourage you on your math if your instructor, and is it Bobby? Is that who you guys all have yeah. for that? Okay. Um, talk to her about using this calculator. You can't take it from your box. It's gotta stay here on campus in this building. But you can down download the app. When she says you can use calculators and stuff like that, then where can I get one of these? Um I think I honestly think we bought these on Amazon. So probably I think they're eighty eight dollars a piece. Is there any like uh, model or anything I need to be looking for? No, I think there's only one place. I think there's only one one company that makes them. Okay, good. But they also make like construction calculators and stuff like that. But um I want this one. This one. Yeah, that's this is the one you want. This is the one you need. Cool. Yeah. I'm not trying to get down on my phone, but as far as I want to go on my phone. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, if you want to, you just give me your your card number and pen number, and I'll take care of it. Yeah. So. Uh, Send me some of Okay. So yeah, uh, we bought we bought like thirty five of them all at one time, and unfortunately no discount on that. So you just paid you just paid whatever you paid for them. So. Um, I have to use it. I can use it for class. Oh, great! I have to pay for the app. Yeah, the reimbursement for the app. Yeah, it's it's a, it's really good. It is okay. So let's talk about semi precision measurements. I want to try. So we're about an hour in. I want to try to get through this so we can be done with you guys for the rest of the week. Um, semi precision measurement. We've already been doing some of those things. Um, we're talking about sixty fourths of an inch. We're talking about um, measuring in single degrees. Um, so if you're in metrology, you're already probably getting ready to start talking about the hook rule. Um, this is just a scale that has something on the end as a stopper. If you don't have something like that, you can use you know, something like this to help keep it even as it goes as a stopper. Um, that's just that's a nymph part that we make. Um, here are some really small gauges uh, if you're measuring in fraction, which is probably pretty uncommon um, for us to really use. Sometimes you'll have end rule measurements on there. Um, this is probably more typically what you're gonna see in a scale. I mean, that's what you have here. Um, your scales are just end, you know, long, long, long line measurements, right? So um, not end measurements. These are pretty nice though. Um, how you hold the scale on your part is really going to matter. So, yeah, I like to bring my measuring tool in and, and measure it. I want to stand it up. If I lay it down, I can get what's actually called parallax error. So I can kind of get like that. It's exaggerated. But, and I, I can start to see that as my number rather than laying it down, getting square on it, making sure that I'm, I'm right across it. So a lot of times if I'm measuring something like this, I might lay it down, get it straight, stand it up, make sure I can really get to see that really well. I was always told 45 or a little higher. Yeah, you want to just be able to make sure that you get that clear view on it. Um, a lot of times on like measuring with the tape measure and stuff, you, you'll oftentimes move to the yeah. second inch 
So not at the end, but you'll move to the one inch mark because the end of those things get beat up pretty bad. And so it's more accurate to measure at the one inch mark. On, on a scale, that should not, be a, that should not be a factor. A scale is pretty rigid on the ends. Shouldn't have to do that. Um, but, but I just do it, I have do it a habit, I guess. Yeah, you have a problem. These do have a tendency to, um, really all scales, since they're oftentimes stamped, they have a tendency to break at the inch increments. Um, if they break at the one inch increment of the scale, then it needs to be replaced. But I would keep those pieces. So like I have some one inch scales. So if I have to get down into some really small areas, I'm like, cool, got it. You know, so keep that way, broken. yeah, keep my broken scale. But it, I mean, what ends it ends up being one of these. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, it, you know, it's a, it's like unfortunate, but then you're like, hey, I'm gonna try to make the best out of it. All right. So um, here is just some fractional reading on our scales and or or rules. And when you want to put it, so this is an eighth scale up here. And to find seven eighths, it is just literally eight marks on from zero to one inch, on and it's side. one eighth, three eighths, five eighths. Because all the other ones, I'm skipping all the evens because they're reducible. What if we have a sixteenth? Um, so yeah, this one's sixteenth. So this is an eight and sixteen, and so this is a thirty-two and sixty-fourths. Yeah, we have a hundred one in metrology too. Mm. So yeah, even even your scales. Weird number ones. Yeah. Do you even go to the aviation ones that are 128? So tell me about that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you get. Uh, did you, ever, you guys ever take a good drafting class or something where they have like the triangle ones yeah, that they don't? I, had you when I was doing yeah. science. One like lab class in or middle school actually. Way to build a bridge. Yeah. So anytime that you're odd on the top number. It's not reducible. So if it's if it's even on the top number, it's reducible. Typically, you're just able to start cutting that thing in half. Uh, and you always want to talk about when you're talking about fractions, you want to talk about them in their lowest form. So to come up to me and be like, "Hey, um, do you know where some six eight stock is?" I'm just going to stand there and wait for you to be like, "What I mean is three quarter inch stock," you know, because that's what it'd be. Or take it down to the decimal for you. Yeah, you can do that too. So metric world is really much simpler, especially on this one. So these lowest marks are in the halves. So everything is a half. And so all you're doing is counting. So you, here's 10, here's 11, here's 11 and a half, here's 12, here's 12 and a half, here's 13, here's 13. And a half. So yeah, yeah, so, um, so everything is either a whole millimeter or a half millimeter. And, and that honestly, is, I don't understand why we won't go to the metric system. Oh, it's so much better. So much better. Um, I like Fahrenheit, though. Not Celsius. You do? Why? What's the matter? I don't know. I just make you feel and make it. It's like, it's like when I read my gauges on my computer and they're in Celsius. I'm like, oh man, we're cool. And I turn that thing into Fahrenheit. We're talking. Yeah. Oh my gosh. 100 degrees. Yeah, right. like, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, so we've got a couple different tools that we use pretty early on. Slide calipers are, uh, or dial calipers is, is probably one of our primary tools. Uh, they have outside measurements, in, inside measurements, and step and depth. Um, and so uh, then also we have, so we have spring calipers. Those are transfer tools. You'll use those in metrology, but you won't use those really anywhere else. So we use those in that classroom I have personally used um, spring calipers probably five times in my life outside of the classroom. A dial caliper, a telescoping gauge is probably my primary tool for trying to do those types of things. Um, slide caliper would be like this. Uh, it's, it's scale dimension. Um, and also sometimes you'll see vernier calipers that, that look like this as well. So we have both. Um, our 12 inch ones, I think, are digital. No, our 12 inch ones are dial. Oh, our, our six inch ones are digital because we, we wanted to start bringing the metrics. Those, those six inch ones also do fractions. So you can go out and do like 364 fourths. You know, I don't know why you'd ever want to do that, but you could. Yeah, you could if you want to. Um, so here's a spring caliper. 
Um, and so it's a transfer tool. So you measure the outside of something, then you transfer it to gauge blocks or a scale or something like that. Mm -hmm. Last week on our first project? Um, yeah, but like, why would you do this when you could really just measure the part or you can use regular calipers for it? So um, it ends up being really, I feel like, an opportunity for an error. Okay, so here's internal, and then they are adjustable here, and, um, and then these, some of these have a firm joint that they lock. And again, you're going to talk about these things in uh, metrology. Okay. Um, if you take metrology, you will. So then you have squares that are adjustable, so maybe in like a combination square set. And these are rigid. They're two-piece, but they're rigid. Um, and so, but if you, if you kind of throwing star them at somebody, uh, this is just pressed in. It can come out. Sometimes they're pinned in. But um, this is not one solid piece. Like my own personal ones are one solid piece. They are not two pieces. You can, you can pull these out if you, if you were. So does that mean? It means be cautious with them. It could be yeah, it means that if you do this really hard a hundred times, there's a potential that you could knock this out of square. So one of the ways that you might check that is I would not check it by bringing it up against this because this isn't necessarily guaranteed square. This is guaranteed flat, okay? So like you would bring it up to another square. You would bring it up to a gauge block or precision ground block that you square know is square. Square your mm -hmm. square, square. Yeah, so um, lots of times you don't think about calibrating your calibrating tools. You wanna find something that's typically 10 times uh, more accurate than it is to do it. So we have some things that you can use for those stuff. Pull out a microscope or something? We have microscope. Yeah. <laughs> Why? We have so much. So it's funny because people always think uh, machine stuff is kind of, you know, just, you know. So like on our high school side, oftentimes we get the kids who struggle with other things. And they're like, let's send them over to machine tool. And I'm like, why would you do that? We're like totally doing math like crazy over here. And then we go teach them all this math stuff. And then they come back at the high school side and they're like, Where, when did you learn all this math stuff? And we're like, Stop pushing your kids away from what they need to be doing, and they're smarter than you think is, is really what we're saying. Um, but typically, people do well when they can understand application. If they know why they're measuring it, you know, like same thing, if, you, if you're trying to figure out um, 87 divided by 4 um, in an arbitrary, non-related to anything, but if I say I have $87, meaning to divide it equally by four people, that makes sense. We can figure that out. It's the same. It's the same number, right? I swear to God, drug dealers have this stuff down. Oh, <laughs> totally, totally. Have you ever Ounces, that? grams. No. I mean, all Honestly, that stuff. Yeah. Like drug, drug dealers are some of the smartest people I know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I yeah. sit back and listen to the drug talk all day long, just like twenty eight grams, twenty eight grams, fifty six grams, or yeah. two ounces. You know, I was like, what the yeah. hell? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Combination square set, um, and again in metrology, yeah, sure. you'll go through that. <laughs> all right. I've never seen. You ever seen a combination square like that? Uh -uh. I mean, that's even used in construction and stuff like that. So, okay, some angle measurements. Um, and we won't really talk too much about angle stuff today. I brought up your protractor. I'm going to go get one part that we can measure. Um, you have some bevel protractors and the combination bevel for multi angles. I've seen one of those, but I never knew what they were for. So, sometimes you see them, um, I actually see them in the construction world quite a bit. Yeah, transfer type things. Like, um, let's say you're doing tile and you got a wonky angle. Mm -hmm. So you set it up against the wall, you bring it down, transfer it out, and then you set that tile back down into the corner of the floor And because it, it's not quite square. It's, it's got a little thing that juts out. So, so yeah, it's a good, good opportunity to do something like that. So um, here's a, a, one that measures in degrees, minutes, and seconds. Uh, you have all kinds of just wonky different things out there. And so what's happened is everybody's had a specific need for something, okay? So same thing with a radius gauge. Uh, radius gauge measures internal radiuses, um, external radiuses. Uh, and so you have radius gauge set in your toolboxes. And we'll talk more about radius gauges, angle sets. Um, some of our students will make those. Oh, wow. Thread gauges. Um, thread pitch gauges. Um, and so... We'll talk, we've got, we really have one more set of slides to do. But this will be our only 
class. Yeah. And then we got to do all those. Yeah, four quizzes. Yeah, four yeah, quizzes. Those, and then I need to go make up that other one. I was, I was like, why did he grade that? I was just trying to try it. And, see what he did. and then you graded it. I got like a two out of ten. It says graded or. You must have answered. Auto. You must have answered questions and then got. Did you answer a couple questions and then get out of it? I answered it and I finished it, but you told me you know in class you said we can retake it. Mm -hmm. You can you can yeah. still retake it. Yeah, I, I bombed that. Thing. It automatically <laughs> grades it. Okay, okay, I was like. Oh, Wait, God. so uh, two of the other quizzes on there, it says that there's nothing for them. When you open it, there's no option to take the test. Which one's that? Hold on. Oh look. So it's. The PMI module two, isn't that it? That's the slides up there. Does it have a? No, it has. It says it's worth next points. Or does it have a profit? Oh, um, you're not it. That's not my class, man. That's in metrology. Oh crap! Maybe that's why. <laughs> yeah, metrology. I have to go talk to him about some stuff. I'm so I didn't do anything for that. <laughs> I did really good so on whatever I did for metrology. <laughs> good job. Which quizzes are we having to do today? Good job. Everything from module two is due, is really just due this week. I got okay. section one, unit two. Well, I can do it tomorrow. Oh, okay. I don't even know. Totally. You've got, I mean, essentially, you've got eight weeks to do it. I just would not do that because by then you'll have forgotten about all yeah. these things yeah. and you're going to be like, bunch of stuff. Exactly. And by waiting to the end, I mean, there's two kind of schools of thought in waiting to the end. You, you're going to say, I've learned all this stuff, and I should be able to blast through this stuff really fast. The other part of it, here's how I would take things, is I would answer the questions as fast as I could, like, well, not would, racing through them, but I would... Honestly, truly, yeah, find out you missed and exactly. study on it. I did exactly. that one the other day. I took it 23 times just because I was trying to remember it instead of reading it. That's, That's a lot. Yeah. And I'm trying to remember it because most of the taking is like six or eight. Yeah. So it took me 28 times. I got a uh, 10, 5, 8 just by memory. Yeah. So, but the, uh, when you do it that many times, sometimes you're, you're just kind of memorizing the four choices. So here's what I would say is open up your book, open up the slides, go through the answers. Don't be in a race to it. There's no time limit on any of this stuff. And I would answer the questions. Yeah. Then as I went on throughout the course, and, and so when you get better at, fraction decimal conversions and triangles and stuff like that, go back to section two, unit one, and be like, I'm going to go back in and blast this thing out. Because I think I can, I got an eight out of 10. I bet I can get a 10 out of 10. And that'll make a huge difference. It really will. There's really, there's no reason that in 101 that you shouldn't get an A. I mean, every, you can take multiple chances and everything's open. So uh, there's no time limits for anything. Everything's open book. I'm okay if you work together as a group, but there will be times where you aren't going to be able to do that. Yeah. <laughs> so to just go, to let Hunter answer all the questions, um, will get you all good grades, but it will not get you. It, yeah, it will not get you. What? Bad I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Um, let's go through this last group of slides, and hopefully we'll be able to. Eight of them? I don't know. I didn't look. Um, so it's page 88. Three of 88. We're going a lot later now. All right, we let's move on. Let's get it going. Okay. Um, all right, so we've already been talking about these things. So a lot of this will be um, duplication. So make sure you take good care on your, of your tools. Uh -huh. um, we have, we have um, straight edges. We also have a granite table that's specifically for straight edges. So making sure that something's good, square, straight, and flat. Feeler gauges, we don't have feeler gauges or um, thickness gauges in toolkits, but we do have them in the PMI kit. So uh, in metrology, you have that. These are pin gauges. So they're, they're similar to these thread gauges. And um, so the thread gauges, they just have a go and no go. So a good or no good. Um, but they but they just have a straight dimension, so it might be three hundred one thousandths and three hundred thousandths. So like three hundred one is good. Like the fine thread ones and the four you can make any whatever you want on these. Yeah, so you can buy these as just the handle and then the go and then the no go, or you can buy these as a set. Um, these just press into the ends of them. They get a little hole there, and you just pop them out if you want to change them out for different things. 
We don't. We buy them like this. They stay like this forever. So you will all have a set of those. Like you, you will not have a set of these. These are these are just common use. Okay. So um, in the black Cornwell cabinet right now, that's where we keep all of our thread gauges in the upper left hand corner there. Um, so these are uh, pin gauges, and so we have gauge pins, and so they're just not in handles like this. Okay, so we have gauge pins and gauge blocks, um, and then these are your your classes. Uh, for gauge pins and gauge blocks. And so here's, here's a picture of one. So same thing as this, but it's got, it's just got a pin, a dowel, like basically a dowel pin on either end. And so here, thread gauges. Uh, here's, this is, red is no-go, green is go. When you say no-go and go, that means that one thread will, it will go in, but the other one won't, right? Exactly. Yeah, okay. So okay. it does go in, you either have a problem. You have too big a hole, or, or you got the wrong size. So, okay, so here's a block that I'm, I'm hoping that we can have some time to measure today. Um, so this is a 3816 UNC 2B is a class of fit. So here's the go side. And the no-go side is just identified by that red band. Let's take that and pass around. So here would be one for a taper. Uh, same thing for like an NPT gauge, it has a taper on there. Here's some ring gauges. You'll use ring gauges, um, especially when you get to calibration on the CNC for the probes. Um, here's some special, uh, sh like gauges for go around the outside of a, of a shaft. Um, service plates, we already have service plates. Squares, we already talked about those. Uh, here's a NIMS part. They're checking for squareness. You should not be able to see any light inside of there. And you want to check it from multiple sides. And then remember, remember square your square. Here, they're doing it on a grant service plane, so like they've got the part. Lay it up. Bring in a real thin feeler gauge. See if you can um, get anything through there. You also want to just check and verify it for light. Now on this, um, I doubt it's square because this is stock material, stock material, stock material. So most likely it's not square. That wasn't the point of this project, so it doesn't really matter here. Gauge blocks. Um, and so we'll, we'll talk more about gauge blocks as we go. Um, but so they are blocks that are listed out starting at 50 thousandths, then 100 thousandths, 101 thousandths, 102 thousandths, 103 thousandths, 104 thousandths, 105 thousandths. And then they start to skip up and to different sizes. Um, and so you'll see those out through the shop. So here's just an example. So you've got all the different sizes. You stack them up to reach certain destinations. So five inches, 137 thousandths. You stack up a five inch case block, a, one, um, a, a 50, and then a um, 93 or 97, a 97 thousandths, a 50 thousandths, and a five inch would be 137. Um, on those gauge blocks, two sides of them are ultra precision ground. You can, they're so flat that if you take them and twist them together, what's called ringing, that they, that they will just vacuum stick to each other. So you, I'll go grab them. Oh yeah, I got to see this. This is okay. interesting. All right, give me a few seconds. If you guys need to stop, go to the bathroom or something. Do that. I got to go to the bathroom. I got to go to the bathroom. Oh, shit. Yo, watch the football. Whoa, man. Yo, I'm telling you, man, football. I was over there tapping my foot. It was getting ready, man. I had a piss. Watch the football. Think I can make it getting a drink? <laughs> I got it. Watch it. Iowa versus fucking Kentucky. Uh. Watch it. Iowa versus Kentucky. I was watching football games and stuff. Like, I, watched, I got the TV right there on the 40. Yeah.